time for the 2022 end of year AI retrospective. I use Stable Diffusion via Mage.Space to generate the heading image for the cover of this report, just like I've done for all previous reports. And check out how high resolution this is. It's the sky is infinite. And if you zoom in here, it's an eight megabyte image. You'll see that it's tremendously high quality. The sky is infinite. And last time we spoke mid-year, around uh, June, July, 2022, I said, keep your eyes out for the sky and what's happening because the sky is bigger than we imagine. Here we are at the end, December, 2022, Hugging Face have added 70,000 new transformer models and the entire space has just been shook up. You would have seen it in the media, the public zeitgeist, people know about this now. You can have a look at my first and second reports here, or you can go and read this report in writing. It's about 20 pages if you'd prefer, if you need to print it out for your office. But here's some video coverage on what actually happened in the second half of 2022. In the middle of 2022, we didn't have this enormous pickup by major companies. Look at the investment that has happened in these huge companies. Some of them didn't even exist a year ago. Synantic got bought out by Spotify. Xiao Ice in China now has a billion dollar valuation. Stability.ai, which gave us stable diffusion, $1.1 billion. And there's some caveats there. DeepMind is their costs, $1.2 billion covered by Alphabet. And OpenAI's $20 billion valuation is a little bit of kind of under the covers gossip. It's definitely not out there in the news cycle yet, but that's the rumor, $20 billion valuation for a company that has given us GPT-2, GPT-3, Clip, Dolly, and the list goes on. The main highlight in the second half of 2022 was the commercialization of text to image models. And there is quite a long list of these text to image models that we'll look at in a moment. But have a look at the major companies that have picked up these text to image models and put them inside applications or even put them to work inside the company. This is German brewer Bro Quadrat, and they've recently used Midjourney version 4, which only came out in November 2022, to generate artwork for their line of sour beer. This is the prompt they use. Commercial shot of raspberry, teal background, splashes, juicy, and we're using version 4 of Midjourney. The prompt actually can be really, really simple with Midjourney. It goes and turns that into something amazing. And this is what they got three different images based on three different prompts that they went and slapped on their cans and helped them to sell their product. It's in old companies as well. Mattel was founded in 1945. I used to play with the Hot Wheels series when I was a kid. I probably still could now. But keep in mind that this has been a slow moving company and there are quite a few of these slow moving companies that are now catching up with these AI models, particularly with text to image models, which are so easy to implement. Here's what they did. They used Dolly 2 by OpenAI to generate concepts for their Hot Wheels series, helping them to tweak their design, try it in different colors, add the soft top, take off the soft top. And Mattel's director of product design said, well, it's about giving us more quantity. It's about going, oh, I didn't think about that. And it's helped them design their new series of toy cars. Absolutely astounding, a 75 year old company applying this in real time to real products that are hitting the shelves from what some people thought was gonna be a flash in the pan. Of course, you and I know better. This is the new revolution. This is the new way of being human. Do you remember AutoCAD by Autodesk? I remember it, the late 80s, my brother was playing around with it. It's still the most used application for computer aided design. We used Vectorworks in sound design, but AutoCAD is still huge. This is a slow moving company as well. 1982, they were founded. That's a very long time ago. Now they've decided to build in all of the latest AI into their platforms. Have a look. This is AutoCAD 2022. They called this 3Dolly, as in 3D Dolly. 
and it allows the user to generate a computer-aided design with the help of artificial intelligence. So we're using GPT-3 to help us write the prompts. Then we're using Dolly 2 to generate the images and we're using Clip to recognize what's going on as well. The models that come out of this are just spectacular. Here is the entire tree, if you like, of different artificial intelligence being used uh, between input and output. If you want slow moving companies, how about the anti-competitive and monopolistic company known as Adobe? Here's what they're playing with, their own text to image model built in to their very popular applications like Photoshop. And this to me is a really extraordinary look at what is actually possible with a couple of clicks, but making it really usable by consumers. Of course, mage.space at the top of this video, really easy to use, but look how it's built into the application. We can add, we can change, we can modify with a couple of clicks. Of course, Microsoft have already done this, building this into Microsoft Designer. Canva have already done this, bringing Stable Diffusion into their online platform. But to have it in one of the old guys is pretty amazing. I know that everyone's gonna have to catch up with this, but to see the slow movers catching up right now in December, 2022, uh, is in some ways is surprising, in some ways not surprising. Large language models have captured the imagination of hackers and you and I for a number of years now, two and a half years to the start of GPT-3's release to now in December 2022. For people that love manipulating language, whether it's words, generating poems, generating stories, writing books like we've seen, or symbols or any other completion, that's absolutely been a massive part of it. But remember, that very old proverb, a picture is worth a thousand words. Leonardo da Vinci put it slightly differently. He reminded us that a writer would be overcome by sleep and hunger before being able to describe with words what a painter is able to depict in an instant. I think for the majority of people out there, text to image models are just more visible. With language, yes, they can go and generate whatever they like, but when it's a picture, when it's an image or a photo, you can actually see and touch and grasp how unusual it is for this to be happening right now. Or maybe not. Here we are in the extraordinary 21st century 2022. Here's a list of major text to image models that have come out in the second half of this year. I know that we had the first couple here, OpenAI's Dolly 1 and Synquas Cogview 1 last year, but just to give some context, Midjourney and Dolly 2 came out just before the crossover of the mid-year point. Dolly 2 gave itself a million users within three months. We've talked about Google Imagine and Google Party. Tsinghua came out with Cogview 2 and then Microsoft New Art Infinity kind of rang in the second half of 2022, and it's been amazing since then. Stable Diffusion, a million users in 50 countries. Crayon still getting a lot of use, even though it's a GAN. Baidu's Ernie Vilge 2, which we've spoken about. NVIDIA's Edify is how I pronounce it. And now Midjourney 4. That is my favorite text to image model of this year. It's only just come out. It's only a, a couple of weeks old now, and it's still got that disastrous text interface via Discord, which is not usable for the majority of people, but we'll put a little wrapper on it and look at some of the results that it's able to do. Here's the really basic prompt, and I wanna recognize Reddit user Kudzu I for this. You'll see his name in a moment. Photo of artists showing off their painting on Reddit. Sometimes we say photo of old man, photo of old man showing off their sculpture, etc. Here's some of the results from this single prompt. It's just a few words. Keep in mind that none of this is photoshopped. None of these people exist and none of their paintings or their sculptures exist. This entire thing, the person, the painting, the background, the entire image was conceptualized by text to image 
Artificial Intelligence via Midjourney version 4, which came out in November 2022. I've talked about this being confronting, jarring. I think this is kind of harrowing. Just imagining how unusual and extraordinary it is for you and I to live right now with this happening. And those examples, just extraordinary. This isn't even the breadth of releases. We haven't even talked about all the fine tunes of these text image models. There are so many now that have gotten fine tuned on anime or specific TV shows, uh, or even specific ways of filming or having particular colors. All of that's available. There are thousands of these text image models if you include fine tunes. I also haven't included text to video. You should have seen some of my videos already covering text to video. That's going to be huge in 2023. Two of the big ones include Google's Fanaki, which was ultra high resolution and Meta AI's Make a Video. All right, give me a bit of rope here. A picture is worth a thousand words. So one word is you, well, like a thousandth of a video. What I'm trying to say here is that large language models to me are far more important than these text to image models. And they've also absolutely exploded in the second half of 2022. You've seen this chart before. Have a look at some of these amazing outputs and we'll talk about some of these. The timeline here comes through to the end of 2022 and it shows really interesting open source offerings from Russia, China, and of course our usual suspects all the way through the US. Open source led the pack in the second half of 2022. So not just stability.ai that we just saw with stable diffusion with their 1 million users and all of these different fine tunes and available in so many different platforms, but open source in large language models as well. Some of them for the first time in terms of their size. We, in the last mid-year report, we looked at Bloom by Big Science, where they brought together a thousand researchers in 60 countries replicating GPT-3 using a more equal distribution of more than 40 languages. So that training started on the 11th of March and ended on the 6th of July, 2022. They trained on 384 a100 gpus at a cost of seven million dollars now across the pond google's equivalent in russia yandex released their 100 billion parameter model but you've also got Tsinghua releasing glm 130b out of china and different versions from meta ai from google who were very open with their models in the second half of the year and of course we know open ai and even Amazon giving us the Alexa teacher model 20B, which I've already spoken about as well. In a recent keynote to 4,000 developers covering companies from Google AI to Meta AI to IBM to Microsoft, they were all there. I talked about just how deeply AI has now proliferated across Fortune 500 companies. Have a look at some of these names. I've done a separate video about this already, but it means that we've touched most of the largest Fortune 500 companies in the world. While I've been advising many large companies over the last 24 months or so, it's always fascinating to me to see how diverse the industries are, as well as the sheer breadth of ways that post 2020, AI impacts both the internal organization, so how the employees can do their job, as well as the external facing organization. So I've worked with Fortune 500s and corporations that have built in these really nice chatbots for their customer facing interface as well. So it's both helping inside as well as helping the products. In my 2021 report, I covered Google using AI to actually design its TPU chips, which are then used to both train and run inference on models. NVIDIA have followed suit. So with the H100, 
part of the Hopper suite that they're very, very proud to introduce, they said, we demonstrate that not only can AI learn to design these circuits from scratch, but AI designed circuits are also smaller and faster than those designed by humans and even state-of-the-art electronic design automation or EDA tools. The latest NVIDIA Hopper GPU architecture has nearly 13,000 instances of AI designed circuits. The result is GPUs that are up to six times faster than the A100s that appeared in most of the current AI models in 2022. So that's what they use to train and run inference for GPT-3, for example, for GPT-3.5 and ChatGPT, all of that was used by Microsoft supercomputer that's part of OpenAI's partnership now, a uh, large supercomputer out there in the middle of Idaho that runs the NVIDIA A100s. The next step is these H100s, which were designed for training transformer models, which I think is just incredible. But the fact that they were trained and that they were designed by artificial intelligence is a little bit scary. We've already spoken at length about Chinchilla. It was around March 2022 when Jordan Hoffman and 20 or so researchers at DeepMind said, wait a minute, we're training these large language models with way less data than we should be. GPT-3 and other models are only using about 9% of the data that they should be using for the same number of parameters. So you should have all been using 11X on what you were doing for data collection. Guess what? All of the major labs have been chasing data, at least for the last six months, to be able to align themselves with chinchilla scaling. Some of them have got it very, very right. Have a look here with WeChat's WeLM10B, Amazon's Alexa TM20B in the green to blue section there. Microsoft Z code used so much data that it way exceeded the new recommendation. And as labs have been seeking out more and more data, they've been trying to find data in different ways. There's rumors that ChatGPT just pulled down dialogue from Twitter to help with that fine tuning. OpenAI also used an incredibly new transform model that they uh, implemented to be able to listen to audio and then transcribed that. Well, that might be useful for video, for spoken word and audio, so that we can pull down what might be terabytes and terabytes worth of actual text data, which we can then use for training our new models. Back in 2019, OpenAI's head of policy said something kind of strange to a media outlet. He said, we're trying to build the road as we travel across it. The ethical debate around AI at the end of 2022 has got very, very noisy. And it seems that the noisiest people are those that are least informed. <laughs> you might've heard this old Turkish proverb that's actually said worldwide, it's not just for Turkey. It is that the dogs bark and the caravan moves on. Where the caravan is our AI and the dogs barking are all these critics who want to bring in their own scared view of the world. We've even got this silly site, paytotrain.ai, that wants to take money. It's a very American concept of suing people or at least charging for data so that anything that's used to train large language models will be reimbursed to the people that own that data. This is a very strange mindset, but if you look all the way back to pre-civilization days, we're programmed, we're wired to be scared of saber-toothed tigers and things that are chasing us. Of course, these fears and this anger is just completely misguided and people have already addressed this. Alan Turing has addressed this at length. Dr. Ray Kurzweil has addressed this in what must be thousands of words across multiple chapters in uh, some of his books. It's just a default response to something that people can't control. The reason that they can't control it, of course, is that AI advances so quickly. It's almost like these guys need a copy of that 
1998 book, Who Moved My Cheese? Just getting ready for change. This revolution is here. Artificial intelligence is here. You can't stop it. If you take GitHub Copilot, Microsoft and OpenAI to court because you think that your data shouldn't be used in the training of these large language models, never mind that all of the pieces of your data have been split out and then connected via the brain of AI while it was training. But you can't go into that brain, that black box, and retrieve exactly what you put in there. It's a different concept. Never mind that that's uh, not even possible. It's not really a great idea to waste time with lawsuits, and yet that's something that's happening right now. Ray Kurzweil put it in a slightly different way here. He says, You can't stop the river of advances. These ethical debates are like stones in a stream. The water runs around them. You haven't seen any of these technologies held up for one week by any of these debates. To some extent, they may have to find some other ways around some of the limitations, but there are so many developments going on, there are dozens of very exciting ideas about how to use information. Although the controversies may attach themselves to one idea here or there, there's such a river of advances. The concept of technological advance is so deeply ingrained in our society that it's an enormous imperative. I've been singing the praises of post-2020 superintelligence for quite a while now because it's right there, it's visible. People should be looking at the fact that it's smarter than average humans and so it can augment and amplify our capabilities. Here's a look at a maths test question from the Polish National Maths Exam which is given to pre-university entrants. And it's a really hard exam. This was given to Google Palm Minerva. That question up the top is real. The model answer is real as well. This model should not have known what a number is, let alone how to handle that number. And yet it outperformed us on the Polish national math exam by 14% higher than the average student. It also scored around 79% higher than the average student in the UK national math exam. This stuff's pretty scary. And here's a more broad overview where Palm is outperforming humans on the superglue benchmark, which was designed to have a high ceiling and to be as hard as possible. And the very new Flan Palm is achieving twice the performance of an average human on the MMLU benchmark, according to Anthropic's averages. But then Anthropic is saying, if you combine the human and the AI model, you get even better than the AI model alone. This rapid evolution of superintelligence via large language models, via artificial intelligence, allows so many things to happen at once. And some of the researchers that are neck deep in this stuff saw this one or two years ago. Ashish Vaswani, who gave us the Transformer model via Google in 2017, 2018, went and founded his own company called Adept.ai. And he wanted to apply the technology to any task in the browser and eventually any task on the computer. They got $65 million in funding. They brought together researchers from DeepMind, Google Brain and OpenAI. And this first release, Act 1, here released in September 2020, can go and find a fridge on Craigslist write an email to the seller and hook all of that up together. Right now it's only a Chrome extension, but you'll be able to use it for any application on any operating system. The intention is to use Transformer to amplify what we're able to ask via natural language and get the computer to do it all. You know that I generally shy away from predictions because it, I'd rather just look at what's happening right now and apply that, make that visible to people. But let's have a look at what we know is coming up in 2023, which is only a number of weeks away. Here's my favorites that I'm looking for and looking after. Let us know in the comments what you're most looking forward to in 2023. DeepMind Gato 2 is my first pick. When he was talking with Lex Friedman, 
DeepMind CEO Demis Hassaba said that they're already training the next embodied generalist agent, which is pre-AGI. We talked about Gato already, but Gato 2 is going to be amazing. Google Pathways, this is my favorite model family. Dr. Jeff Dean recently said they're looking at building a thousand language, large language model. Everyone's talking about OpenAI GPT-4, so keep your eyes open for that in January or February 2023. And more and more text to video models. I can't wait for this. They're already high resolution, but what if I can ask, build me a 4K movie about X, Y, and Z. I want my favorite actor in there. I want it to have this storyline. I want it to be this genre. And with this, some of the sound models we've seen, I even want to have it inspired by this composer. That's gonna be incredible. And that's really just around the corner. At the beginning of this year, 2022, OpenAI's chief scientist commented that in the future, it will be obvious that the sole purpose of science was to build AGI. We're in the middle of that future right now to the extent that Midjourney, who I just mentioned, gave us this amazing text to image model, named their entire company off the fact that we are in the middle of this journey. You're right in the thick of it, right in the heart of this incredible revolution. Here are some of the other things that I see through the lens of hindsight. AI can help us with solving this low hanging fruit. What about driving by hand? A human is brutally killed every 24 seconds trying to drive cars and driving causes an additional two significant injuries every second. Education in herds. Children waste 11,000 hours in classroom and a few thousand more hours studying, learning how to memorize facts, solve problems and be creative. Never mind that that is at least a few decades old. Jobs in cages, most adults spend close to all of their waking time at work or stressing about work, a place where their productivity and effectiveness is less than 50% that of today's AI. Money for nothing, the delta between CEO and minimum wage remains at 670 to one, meaning the average CEO receives $6.7 million in compensation for every $10,000 the worker received. Nutrition by guesswork. Most diets in 2022 are guesswork based on feel or limited research. At the same time, 42% of Americans are obese and 32% of all deaths worldwide are attributed to heart disease. My sixth one here, relationships in the dark. Most adults are navigating relationships with next to no training with more than half of them experiencing some form of mental health issue in their lifetime. AI is primed to solve or is well on the way to at least providing a beneficial solution to all six of these examples. And there are even more than that. There's capitalism, there's the economy, there's life in general and living. We can split that out. But AI is poised to be able to solve that already. We're waiting for people to implement the large language models to help us with this. But the benefit of AI is for all of humanity and always has been. The sky is infinite in that regard. I'm calling on governments and intergovernmental organizations, and I've worked with the cream of the crop across both standalone governments and groups of governments in implementing AI and also just spreading the word about AI, helping write policy. But all governments need to step up and get a new foothold. They need to forge a new path in what is possible with today's AI. In 2023, that's gonna become even more important. The promise of artificial intelligence and its benefits for everyone is life-changing. As more and more people begin sitting up and taking notice of today's AI performance, spectacular new AI models are already in training right now, ready for release in 2023. From the dawn of artificial general intelligence, AGI, to new ways of seeing the world, the sky is infinite. I'm gonna invite you to join the memo, which is now host to a bunch of paid subscribers. We've got thousands of members now, Microsoft, IBM, Google, Berkeley, MIT, governments, they're all in there. Join in with us. We've got the monthly editions, we've got the updates, and I'm looking at providing a more real-time mechanism for high volume updates. 
keep your eyes open in 2023. What is happening right now concerns you, concerns you, your family, your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. We're pioneers in this field, we're middle of the journey, and what's happening right now, all the way through 2023, is going to impact and affect every human being alive. Stay on the cutting edge of it, stay on the bleeding edge with it with me. Via the memo or via these videos, you're definitely invited. And keep your eyes open for what's out there. You're able to read the papers, you're able to keep up to date with this because the labs are open. Probably more importantly, you're able to get hands-on with the models. Right now, you can go and use Midjourney version 4. You can go and use GPT 3.5. You can go and play around with the 70,000 new models that were released by Hugging Face in 2022. All of that's available to you. So sit back and uh, relax into the amazingness that is 2022 into 2023 artificial intelligence. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Life Architect dot AI slash memo. I have the memo.